Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Alicia Dreaming and today I wanted to talk about some of the books. Um, one particular series that I started this summer, well I didn't start it this summer, I started it actually a while ago, but I took a detour because it's actually The Dresden Files. Um, so when I was originally introduced to The Dresden Files, um, it was long after the show had its premiere on sci-fi, but, um, yeah, like, I just, um, like, I finally got talked into watching the show and reading the books and stuff, and, like, the show is okay. It, I mean, it's sci-fi, you know? Um, it, you, it, you can tell the production value is kind of low, <laughs> but I was really, um, I was really in awe of the actress that they got for, um, for Murphy. And it's funny because, um, she's the actress that they got for Murphy actually ended up being the mother from the Charmed reboot. She was only in like one episode, one or two episodes. Um, but, um, I, and her name escapes me, but anyways, okay. So like, but in the books, I actually found myself really, really, really enjoying Susan Rodriguez, which is Harry Dresden's first girlfriend. And um, I'm going to put the the books up here, up here somewhere. Um, like, okay, so Susan Rodriguez is a very ambitious um, paranormal journalist. And... Yeah, she's uh, an ambitious Latina, and I'm very glad Harry didn't take advantage of her when she drank the love potion. Um, it made it her kind of frisky. I kind of like her despite being a sexy Latina trope because she is so career-minded. Maybe, so maybe she's not a trope, you know? Um, I'm currently reading the third book. No, wait, I just, I had finished that. I wrote this one. I had was still reading that. And I can totally see why I'm going to miss Susan because, spoiler, she gets herself turned into a vampire in book four. But, like, the process actually starts in book three. Um, they start turning her into a vampire, but, like, I guess the full transformation doesn't happen until um, she actually kills somebody. So, yeah, it was, it, I felt really bad for, um... For Harry and Susan because they he had just figured out he loved her he needed to tell her and um yeah I just I really liked Susan but um at the same time I don't because she has I, I don't I mean I appreciate that she had real heart you know the way she traded away her memories for Harry's freedom and also I'm curious to see what court she's going to be a part of um, second book, I'm also kind of annoyed at how close minded, um, Murphy can always be trying to arrest Harry and such. And I'm not sure why we needed so many different kinds of werewolves, Luke, Garou, and the other ones. I will say I don't feel enough, there's enough women in the books. There's only Murphy and Susan and that vampire lady. Um, the, uh, like it took me a while to notice that there were so few women because in the previous books there were lots of appearances for Susie and, Susan and Murphy. Also in the werewolf book there seemed to be a big cast, full moon, and the werewolf where human lady was very prominent. It wasn't until the third book though, Grave Peril, that I really felt like Susan was being turned for Harry's development and like she'd taken such a backseat to his life and the only other lady Charity, Michael's wife, was definitely tortured to hurt Michael and Harry. And the three women in the series so far, Murphy was stuck in her nightmare. Never, the never, never, not sure, but definitely comatose. And Charity got kidnapped by Harry's doppelganger and one, went into labor too early. And Susan was bitten by a vampire and Harry was left looking for a way to free her from vampirism. <sighs> Thoughts on the show now that I've read three books? I really wish that they hadn't melded the two characters of Susan, Susan and Murphy together. The actress for Murphy is Athena and there is no Susan equivalent in the show. Um, 
yeah, like I actually, um, I, I would have appreciated more seasons in, in the, um, the show, but I think it, I, I'm trying to remember the research I did. I think it came about in, um, during the time of the writer's strike or something was going on. I don't know. I just, it didn't do very well in sci-fi and anyways, but, um, yeah, like one thing I will say is that I totally recommend the audiobooks for the Dresden Files novels because, um, James Marsters reads, um, the books and he's just a phenomenal narrator. He, um, He's like, honestly, I had, I had watched the show first before fully getting into the books and, um, but like, I think the thing that ticked me off about the books was that I was reading them. And then when I was listening to them, um, yeah, James Marsters just like totally clinched it for me. I don't know if you know him from Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, Spike. So yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like I, I really enjoy the books. I hope to do a deep dive of, or like, I'm not going to do one by one, at, um, book reviews because I mean, they've been out for a while. People know them already. They're pretty popular. Um, but I would like to... I would like to see the franchise come back in some shape or form, it, not necessarily a sci-fi show because sci-fi is, you know, like pretty much dead now. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was, it was a fun show. And I think, um, I really think that it could have been, it could, it deserved more seasons be because there's so much source material, but, um, yeah, that's my review of the first three books. Grave Peril, Full Moon, and I don't remember the other one. I will put it up here. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.